The story begins by introducing Chris, a former Asian American police officer who has left the police force due to the corruption he witnessed among his fellow officers. Instead, he has opened a martial arts training center to make a living. At his training center, Chris teaches a group of teenagers, but they express disappointment with his instruction, suggesting that he needs to improve his own martial arts skills before teaching others. Faced with their complaints, all the students ask for a refund of their fees, feeling they haven't received the training they expected. Chris, with a smile, agrees to refund their fees and gives them their money back. He decides to let go of his students rather than train those who underestimate his abilities. After the teenagers left, Chris promptly cleaned up his martial arts training center. Archer, a relative who works in the police force, came to visit him. Archer sought out Chris, hoping he would rejoin the police force. She knew about Chris's talents that could help catch criminals, and she also mentioned that Chris's late father had been a highly respected police officer. She believed Chris's return could help maintain the community's trust in the police. Despite having no income from his martial arts center, Chris declined Archer's offer because he didn't want to work with corrupt individuals in the police force. The next day, Chris attempted to offer martial arts training services to police officers. When he arrived at the police station, he met his younger brother, Ken, who was a police officer. Ken was surprised by Chris's simpler appearance compared to his time as a police officer. Although they were siblings, they didn't appear very close. Soon, senior police officer Hatton and his colleague Perry entered the sports room and made fun of Chris, who was now a martial arts trainer with no students. Chris tried to ignore Hatton's taunts until Archer, who had witnessed the situation, came in and asked Chris to demonstrate his skills. Hatton, unwilling to back down, challenged Chris to a reflex test to determine who could attack the other first. Chris proposed that if he could mark Hatton's face with a blue marker, he would win. Hatton, underestimating Chris due to his smaller figure, accepted the challenge. Surprisingly, Chris displayed lightning-fast reflexes and marked Hatton's face with the marker. Hatton had not anticipated losing to Chris and had to swallow his pride in front of Archer and others who witnessed the defeat. Archer invited Chris to her office for a chat and once again offered him a position in the police force, but Chris declined for the same reasons as before. Hatton, still embarrassed by his defeat, held a grudge against Chris. Meanwhile, a detective named Michelle was having a conversation with her relative, Abby, before encountering Chris at the police station. They had a prior relationship when Chris was still a police officer, and they appeared to be friendly. They decided to chat at a nearby bowling alley, where they discussed various topics, including their past relationship and Chris's younger brother, Ken. Chris seemed unresponsive to Michelle's questions about Ken, as their relationship was strained and they kept their distance from each other. After their meeting, Chris accompanied Michelle home, and she asked if they could maintain a good relationship despite Chris no longer being in the police force. On the other hand, illegal drug lords were conducting an unlawful transaction. The police, acting on a tip, surrounded the location to catch them in the act. A swift police raid ensued, with Ken, who was part of the mission, tasked with apprehending the main culprit. However, during the operation, Perry unexpectedly requested that Ken hand over the task to him. Ken eventually complied, allowing Perry to take charge. Later, back at Chris's home, he was shocked when Ken arrived severely wounded, a bullet lodged in his abdomen. Chris was bewildered by his younger brother's condition and Ken's unconsciousness due to severe bleeding prevented Chris from getting answers about what had transpired. Chris's neighbor emerged upon hearing his distressed voice, and several police officers also arrived, accusing Chris of shooting Ken. They demanded Chris surrender and go to the police station. Chris realized he was being framed and grew increasingly agitated as he watched Ken die without immediate assistance. Convinced of his innocence, Chris fought off two police officers who tried to apprehend him and successfully incapacitated them before escaping from his house. The following morning, Chris's residence was declared a crime scene after Ken's tragic death. Michelle arrived to investigate the incident at Chris's house. During the investigation, the police suspected Chris, who had fled, as the main suspect in Ken's shooting. 
Meanwhile, the two police officers who had failed to capture Chris the previous night met with Hatton, who was infuriated by Chris's escape. Their conversation revealed that Hatton had intentionally framed Chris because he harbored a personal grudge against the former police officer, who had superior skills. To track down Chris, Hatton ordered his subordinates to monitor various potential locations the fugitive might head to. As for Chris, he was seen walking barefoot, unaware that a police officer under Hatton's command had spotted him heading toward the bowling alley. This officer promptly informed Hatton of Chris's whereabouts. Soon after, another police officer, acting as Hatton's messenger, approached the one who had reported Chris's location. Together, they entered the bowling alley to apprehend Chris. Inside the bowling alley, Chris enjoyed a cup of tea served by Mike, the snack bar manager, who had earlier questioned why Chris had come alone. Moments later, Hatton's envoys, Gale and King, entered with guns drawn pointing them at Chris. Aware that these two officers were part of the group that framed him, Chris resisted. With his martial arts skills, he easily overpowered Gale and King, even placing their battered bodies in the middle of the bowling arena and playfully tossing some bowling balls to intimidate them. After defeating Gale and King, Chris swiftly departed in the police officer's car. Back at Chris's house, Abby helped Michelle access files from a flash drive that Michelle had found in Ken's pants pocket during her investigation. Soon after, Michelle received a distress call from Mike, and upon arriving at the bowling alley, she discovered the aftermath of the earlier fight involving Chris, with Mike badly beaten and the place in disarray. Meanwhile, Chris used his remaining money to purchase supplies at a convenience store. During this time, Archer contacted Hatton and Michelle to discuss Ken's murder case. Archer ordered Hatton and Michelle to locate and apprehend Chris immediately for questioning regarding Ken's death. While discussing the matter, Hatton received an unexpected call, prompting him to request permission to take it. Michelle grew suspicious of Hatton's strange behavior, sensing that he might be hiding something. Returning to Chris, he had prepared some equipment and was approaching the house of a police officer named Spencer, who worked under Hatton. Without hesitation, Chris attacked and subjected Spencer to torture in the officer's own yard as retribution for Ken's death. He continued to inflict pain on Spencer without inquiring about the circumstances surrounding his younger brother's demise. Meanwhile, Perry, a corrupt police officer, was seen extorting two teenagers who were relaxing near a sports field. Driven by fear, the teenagers had no choice but to comply with Perry's demands. Unbeknownst to them, Chris had been observing Perry's actions. After the teenagers left, Chris confronted Perry, assaulting the corrupt officer and deliberately injuring him with previously prepared equipment. Perry, refusing to give in, sought refuge in a nearby building and armed himself with a sharp weapon to confront Chris. However, without hesitation, Chris defeated Perry once again, even causing damage to the corrupt officer's fingers, who had previously insulted him. Chris then returned to his house, where he encountered Abby and Michelle, who were still investigating the circumstances surrounding Ken's death. Abby, having discovered a crucial piece of information regarding Chris's younger brother's demise, intended to share it with Chris and Michelle. Tragically, before she could reveal it, an unknown assailant shot and killed her. Shortly thereafter, a series of gunshots rang out, targeting both Chris and Michelle. Michelle sustained injuries from the gunfire, prompting Chris to rush to her side to assess the extent of her wounds. After the shooter made a hasty escape, Chris, determined to uncover the truth about Ken's death, reluctantly left Michelle behind and took Abby's laptop containing vital information about the attacker. Finding a safe spot, he opened the file that Abby had accessed, which held an audio recording. Upon listening to the recording, Chris finally learned that Perry had been the one to shoot Ken under orders from Hatton. This shocking revelation took place on the night they were apprehending illegal drug dealers involved in a transaction. Perry had unexpectedly killed one of the captured drug dealers and Ken, aware of the crime, had intended to expose all of Perry's misdeeds to the media. This prompted Perry to shoot Ken. Furthermore, the recording disclosed that Chris's former students, who had requested refunds, were all secretly paid by Hatton to enroll in Chris's martial arts training center and undermine Chris's abilities. 
Several hours later, Hatton armed himself with various weapons, seemingly preparing for a confrontation with Chris. Meanwhile, it appeared that Michelle had been captured by Hatton's group and was being held hostage in an abandoned warehouse. To ensure Michelle remained under control, Hatton ordered his corrupt police subordinates to guard the area surrounding the hostage location. At the same time, Chris discovered that Michelle had been taken hostage and resolved to rescue her. Before embarking on his mission, Chris took a moment to pray for the strength to seek vengeance against Hatton and his subordinates, who bore responsibility for Ken's death. Returning to Michelle's captivity location, an unexpected twist unfolds as Hatton is revealed to have collaborated with Archer to orchestrate these abductions as a trap to lure Chris out of hiding. Archer is known for her role in concealing police misconduct from the public eye to preserve the police force's credibility in the city. Outside the building, Chris initiates the rescue mission by incapacitating the police officers guarding the place. Upon successfully entering the building, he encounters Michelle being held at gunpoint by Archer. At the same time, Hatton arrives, aiming his weapon at Chris, who then challenges Hatton to a hand-to-hand -hand combat, deliberately opting not to use weapons. Hatton, refusing to be underestimated, finally accepts Chris's challenge, and they engage in a fierce physical showdown. Meanwhile, Michelle manages to free herself from her restraints and launches an attack on Archer. Ultimately, Chris emerges victorious in the fight, defeating Hatton by knocking him off an upper floor. Hatton recognizes that Chris's martial arts skills surpass his own and, not wanting to face his fate alone, shoots Archer, who was about to harm Michelle. In the end, the film depicts Chris successfully avenging his younger brother's death and free Michelle. The two of them exit the abandoned warehouse together, with Michelle expressing her commitment to helping Chris evade prosecution for Ken's death. She is willing to testify and expose all the wrongdoing committed by Hatton and his corrupt police associates. A few moments later, the police arrive at the scene of Michelle's captivity. Chris raises his hands, surrendering himself to undergo the legal process. Moral lesson from this story, never to underestimate others based on their appearance and to avoid holding grudges against others due to challenges you create for yourself, or you might end up with a blue marker on your face.